Things were quiet after our two-pronged assault on Advent's Avatar project. Maybe a little too quiet. The peacekeepers and the Chosen seemed intent on keeping their heads down, at least for the time being, no doubt plotting up a way to strike back at us. Given how few resources we had to work with at the moment, we spent some time scouring the region for salvageable goods. First, we managed to track down a number of dead alien specimens in South Africa, which we sent to Tigan's lab for further study. Further investigation quickly revealed a nearby mass grave, where even more alien corpses had been hastily concealed, along with much more valuable salvage. In the meantime, I kept our agents as busy as possible, queuing up new research and development projects and assigning all manner of covert operations. It was important for us to maintain at least some of the momentum we had built up, because the last thing I wanted was for any of the men to start developing a false sense of security. First, I sent Pierce Wall and John Morgan to help the skirmishers come up with a new way to streamline our armor research projects. When that was finished, I sent out Michaelum and Rhino to collect a cache of supplies that the Templars had ID'd for us. And when that operation wrapped up, I sent out Altex and Fireball to help the skirmishers develop some new weapon upgrades for our armory. While all that was going on, Lily's team had completed their work on Tigan's prototype Psy Lab, which he insisted would allow us to unlock the psionic potential of our recruits. As I expected, most of the men were reluctant to help test out the new equipment, but one of them, recruit Naz Odeon, quickly and enthusiastically volunteered. He rambled something about totems and magic artifacts and kept waving a muton breathing mask around. I decided it couldn't hurt to make him our first test subject. Oh, don't look at me like that. It's not like I wanted him to die or suffer brain damage or anything. I just figured it was best to restrict our early testing to one of the more, um, expendable recruits. Besides, much to my surprise, the experiment actually ended up being successful. Naz spent several days in some kind of enclosed chamber being bombarded by alien radiation, and when he emerged, he had the power to freeze things with his mind. I think we were all pretty pleased with the results, and none more than Naz himself. He practically begged the research personnel to let him spend more time in the chamber. I did have some concerns about the dozens of potential side effects that Tygen and his staff kept hiding in the margins of their notes, but Tygen reassured me that it was nothing to worry about. He was eager to move forward with their research, and his team felt fairly confident that they could give Naz some sort of mind-control abilities. So I reluctantly allowed the testing to continue. Tigan's fascination with the strange alien crystals didn't stop there. He soon sent me a thick report speculating on all manner of miraculous things he was sure that they could be used for. Not only could they imbue a man with psychic powers, he was also quite certain that they could be used to develop advanced power generators, projected energy weapons, and even suits of powered armor. It was a lot to take in, and the new projects he was proposing were going to be quite expensive, and we just couldn't afford that sort of thing at the moment. Instead, I told him it was more important to streamline our current manufacturing process so we could properly equip our field operatives. He grudgingly agreed. Afterwards, Lily's team doubled down on finishing our new communications facility. We would now be able to expand our network even further. Her team had also finished building that prototype Skulljack that Tygen had designed, which would theoretically allow us to hack an Advent officer's brain. Apparently, that involved plunging a pair of energized surgical blades through the victim's skull and into their brain. It, uh, sounded very... scientific? Thankfully, Lily had also directed her team to work on some more practical projects as well. They quickly finished upgrading all of the explosives in the armory, which would provide a much-needed boost to our grenadiers. It had been a busy month for XCOM, but aside from a new vigilance campaign, Advent had been disturbingly quiet. When the spokesman contacted us with his end-of-month report, the reason for this silence became abundantly clear. Apparently, the Advent Authority was putting a number of new plots into motion. The Chosen were continuing their efforts towards choking off our flow of supplies, and the Advent Peacekeepers were working to start cracking down on our potential recruitment pools. Mordena was also apparently spearheading some sort of new training program, 
intended to make Advent stun lancers even deadlier than before. Fortunately, we were getting more support from our allies than ever before. With their assistance, we were now putting out enough pro-XCOM propaganda that we would be able to more efficiently broker deals with any new resistance cell we came into contact with. The new propaganda was also having a negative effect on Advent's forces, making their peacekeepers more likely to hesitate before engaging XCOM operatives in open combat. We quickly leveraged our new reputation by contacting a resistance cell in New Chile, which meant that we now had contacts all throughout South America. That would make things much easier once it was time to take down Don Slayer, and it also opened the door to establishing communications with another resistance cell in New Australia. By that point, Tigan had finished streamlining our manufacturing process. All of our future Proving Ground projects would require significantly less resources to complete. I knew he hadn't been very enthusiastic about the project, so I rewarded his good work by signing off on another one of his bizarrely brutal autopsy projects, this time on one of Advent's shield bearers. He gleefully hacked the corpse apart in minutes, then scribbled up some sketches of various creative new armored vests he had come up with while he was elbow-deep in gore. I still wasn't really comfortable with how he seemed to come up with his best technological innovations while sawing apart exotic corpses, but I decided I might as well keep taking advantage of it, and I ordered the gray shirts to let him continue his research efforts with another alien corpse, this time one of those cybernetic archons. Then, word finally came in about another potential field op. Apparently, Advent was transporting an important prisoner to one of their holding facilities, and the spokesman alerted us to a brief opening in their security. I jumped at the chance to finally lead a real operation again. Signing off on research projects and covert operations was one thing, but somehow I felt more alive when I was directing our men in the field. I quickly assembled a rescue team, with Mark and Don forming the core of the squad, of course. Potato had gotten a bit worn down during some of our more recent missions, disillusioned by the moral compromises we had been forced to make in our war against Advent, so I sent him along as well, in hopes that rescuing a civilian might lift his spirits. The team still needed some heavy support, so I assigned Demon and Steel Badger to the squad. And then, um... Well, it turned out that Mr. Shellshock had already taken it upon himself to fill the last seat on the Sky Ranger. Nobody seemed particularly comfortable with asking him to disembark, and I guess he was just eager to help out, so I let him fill the last slot on the squad. The team was ready, so I gave the go signal, and the Sky Ranger headed for the heart of a nearby Advent City. Operation Ice Storm had officially begun. transmission from the spokesman. The Resistance has a VIP operating out of this area in need of immediate extraction. Advent forces are on alert nearby. Be prepared to engage and eliminate any hostile contacts. Secure the area and escort the VIP to safety. Menace 1-5, target coordinates incoming. Secure the VIP and proceed to the evac volume for extraction. Advent already knows we're here, so your position isn't concealed for the extraction. Hey, Redcon Raider here, and welcome back to episode 13. It looks like we're starting off with a basic VIP escort mission today. I don't think we've done one of those yet, so... For those who aren't already familiar with the game, it basically involves having to run down this short stretch of street to the evac zone with the VIP in tow. We basically rescued the VIP off screen, but set off the alarm in the process. So now we've got to scramble to the evac zone before Advent Interceptors can swoop in and chase off the Sky Ranger. Because of the nature of the mission, we don't get the benefit of concealment this time around. Advent knows we're here, so that means it's just going to be a straightforward fight. No need to ask twice. Hmm. Apparently we've run out of decent cover to hide behind, so... I guess for now Steel Badger and the VIP will risk standing out in the open. It should be fine as long as neither of them triggers an enemy pod. 
So far, so good. No sign of any enemy pods. That rooftop might make a good vantage point as we approach the evac zone. All right, let's get everyone onto Overwatch and prep for the next turn. Scanning. Overwatch. Affirmative. Overwatch. Covering now. Affirmative. Covering now. Okay, no sign of any enemies whatsoever, so let's continue carefully moving along the road here. But we know there's going to be at least three enemy pods between us and the evac zone, so we have to be careful. Heading there now. Oh, and there we go. There's the first pod. Looks like an Archon, a Muton, and an Advent turret. Well, they've conveniently put themselves close enough together to hit them all with one grenade, so let's start off with that. Boom. Now, let's try to plan out our next actions efficiently here. I think Mark can try to hack that turret, but first let's see if Potato can pick off that Muton with lightning hands. Ah, no such luck. Alright, well, let's go ahead and bring Badger up next to Shellshock and... Oh shoot, okay, we just triggered another pod. Looks like we've got a shield bearer, an advanced trooper, and another archon to deal with. Well, that, uh, that, of course, changes my plans a bit. Let's go ahead and move Mark up and see if we can hack that turret. We could really use some extra fire support out here. Ah, right, of course. Silly me, Mark doesn't actually have Haywire Protocol yet. Well, let's see what else we can do. Well, I think we could use some more grenades, so let's go ahead and bring Demon up. We already know the first pod is clustered close enough together to be hit with a single grenade, so we're going to hit them again. That took out the Muton. I was hoping it would kill the turret too, but it's still hanging in there with one more hit point. Fortunately, it does look like we get to take advantage of that new resistance order we just selected. Because we revealed these guys on our turn, they all start off dazed. They're only going to get one action when their turn comes up. I hate to waste a full attack action on finishing off that turret. I'm not sure if we have much choice, though. I wonder if Badger could... No, unfortunately the turret's just outside of his throwing range. And I definitely don't like a lot of these hit percentages. It's possible I could take some of these enemies out with a single shot, but... There's a decent chance I could miss, and then I've just wasted their actions entirely. Alright, well, Potato has Poison Bullet, so let's risk taking a shot with him. If we're lucky, he can finish off that Archon in one shot. It was a solid hit, but not quite enough to actually kill it. And with two hit points left, we can't rely on the Poison to kill it either. But you know what? I think... I think I'm coming up with a plan here. See. Bear with me for a moment, I'm just counting spaces. Unfortunately, it 
doesn't look like Don will be able to move up far enough to hit them both with a single grenade. Mark and Steel Badger still have attacks they can make, too. So maybe if I... I guess that'll be okay. Mm, still a pretty bad chance to hit. Oh wait, I have the teamwork ability. All right, time for Mark and Don to show off the benefits of friendship. Don will go ahead and shuffle up into a well-covered position. I'm, I'm trusting you here. Then Mark will shout words of encouragement to him. I give you strength. And then Don will toss his plasma grenade over there, taking out the turret and the Archon in one shot. Multiple enemies neutralized. Okay, that just leaves us with Badger. He doesn't have a whole lot of good options. He's pretty much got a 50-50 shot to hit that Archon, and even if he hits it, it won't kill it. But he's got a hair trigger, so maybe he'll get lucky. Well, it was a solid hit. We can take some solace in that. And now that the Archon's entered a battle frenzy, that at least limits the actions it can take. Okay, well... That could have gone better, it could have gone worse. Badger took an errant shot there, but he's used to getting shot. The shield bearer tossed up a force field, but fortunately the Archon, because of its battle frenzy, had already rushed out of range before the shield could take effect. It looks like Shellshock can hit both the Advent Trooper and the shield bearer with a single grenade, so I'm probably going to do that. But we're on a timer, so it's important to keep moving down the road towards the evac zone. Let me see if I can find a better place for him to stand before he uses his attack action. On the move. Looks like one of them came back oh, you have got to be kidding me. This is the shot we've been waiting for. Take that thing down before it has a chance to run. Okay, immediate change of plans. We need to focus on the Berserker Queen. Fortunately, she's already pretty close to death, so let's start off by hitting her with one of Potato's Poison Sniper Rounds. Nice, okay. That takes out a big chunk of her remaining health and poisons her, so now every bonus action she gets, she'll take some poison damage. Now, I'd love to take her out, but I'm not sure if we can get anyone close enough. I'm not crazy about using an attack action on what amounts to a 2 and 3 chance to hit. But I guess we don't have much choice, so let's go for it. Nice, that's another solid hit. Alright, at this point pretty much anyone can finish her off as long as they can hit her. But I need to do it quickly because she still gets an action after every one of our actions. Let's go ahead and bring Mark over. He can take the final shot. Here I come. Whoops, right, and she gets an immediate response action. Okay, well, I really expected her to attack, but you know what? That's fine. I'll take full advantage of this. exactly she planned on doing with this thing. I would be curious to hear her reasoning, although I would question whether reason was ever involved in this decision. And crisis partially averted. Now, I was going to have Shellshock hit those two troopers over there, 
But now I think his grenade is put to better use taking out this muton. By itself, the plasma grenade wouldn't be enough to drop the muton, but fortunately for us, the muton has taken cover yeah, behind something that's highly explosive. Just enough to take him out in one shot. I suppose our next most immediate threat is this Archon that's right in Badger's face. I'm obviously going to shoot at it, but let's get Badger into a more defensive position first. Well, it was only a grazing hit, but damage is damage, so let's see if we can finish off the Archon with someone else. Let's go ahead and bring up Demon and... That would be a waste of a grenade. I don't think it would even do enough damage to drop the Archon anyway, so let's take our chances with just shooting at it. Well, another solid hit, but it's still hanging in there. Oh well, let's get the VIP into some better cover and see what this guy does. And of course, he's making a beeline right for a badger. Ah, but he missed. Okay, again, that turn could have gone better, it could have gone worse. Uh, Mark took a light wound, but otherwise everyone's fine, and hopefully we should be able to wipe out this pod before the end of the turn. I think we should start off by prioritizing the shield bearer. Then we won't have to deal with the shield on the advanced trooper. Not a bad start. Now I just need to follow it up with another hit. I need to take out that Archon as well, but he's a lower priority for the moment. On the move. Not a great chance to hit, but let's go for it. And unfortunately, it just didn't pay off this, uh... Oh, right. Demon is afraid of missing shots. When they get back to base, we'll have to give our soldiers some time to heal. Mentally and physically. I, uh, wouldn't worry about it, Bradford. Turns out most of our men have mind shields on, so... Nothing like a temporary psychic lobotomy to keep you from panicking in the field. Alright, let's get Don to blade rush that shield bearer. There we go, now the trooper is unshielded. But he does still have some cover over there. But that's what grenades are for. Let's move Potato up and he'll lob his plasma grenade at that statue. And now Mark can finish him off, but actually, before we use Mark's action, let's go ahead and make sure that we're going to be able to take out this Archon. Badger's got a pretty good chance to hit at point-blank range, but you never know. Alright, and now we can go ahead and shuffle Mark over into full cover, and he can take a shot at that trooper. And there we go. That takes score. care of pod number three. Mm. 
And unfortunately, because we saw alien activity there, that means there's at least one more pod on the field. So, we're going to have to stay on our guard as we continue advancing towards the evac zone. Orders confirmed, on the move. We've still got eight turns on the timer, so we don't need to rush too much. We'll move up slowly, hugging cover, and setting ourselves on overwatch at the end of every turn. Moving to position. Scanning. Now, unfortunately, that doesn't make for the most exciting viewing, but I'll try to make it quick. And of course, this does also give us a chance to reload our guns and dole out some healing as necessary. Still no sign of any enemies, so let's keep moving up. We've got a scanning tower ahead, so I'll have Mark take a quick look at that. But we probably won't risk trying to hack it. If, if you say so. Honestly, if we can get close Position enough to the confirmed. evac zone, I may just have everyone sprint up there and evac. We won't even worry about the last pod if we don't have to. Heading out. Finally. Got it, moving. On overwatch. Affirmative. Covering now. Affirmative. Covering now. Got it covered. Okay, let's take a quick peek at that scanning tower. Attempting infiltration. Increased vision range. We actually don't want that because that'll make it easier to trigger the pod. So instead, let's go ahead and dole out a little more healing. Go medical. Hostiles on the move. Whoops, okay, well, we heard them that time. They might actually be right up on top of that roof. I guess we'll know once we get a little closer. Let's go ahead and keep moving up, but we're going to need to be a little more careful about hugging cover. If they start shooting down at us from an elevated position, this could quickly turn into a slaughter. It still looks clear. Okay, let's bring the rest of the team up. Oh, you know what? I'm ignoring the perfectly good cover that's being offered by the interior of the building. Let's smash the VIP face first through this plate glass window. And now everyone can take cover inside. Roger that. Moving to Overwatch. Yeah, that definitely looks like it's coming from the rooftop. Well, I could start sprinting towards the evac zone, but at this I point I think it might be a better idea to just move up next to that drainage pipe. And then next turn we can move up and engage the last enemy pod. Moving to position. Is it clear? <laughs> On the move! Got it. Moving. 
Getting it done. Overwatch. Overwatch! Moving Overwatch. Come and get some. Hostiles are moving. Still no sign of that Advent pod, so let's get up there and see what happens. Closing on target position now. Oh, well, uh, this is a little anticlimactic. Well, let's go ahead and bring up the rest of the squad. Um, we've still got four turns on the timer, so... We'll stick around a little bit. Maybe we can spot the last pod and get a few more kills. Though we will, of course, evac the VIP as soon as we can get her up here. Oh shoot, I shouldn't have done that. Now he's going to block the rest of the... Uh... Oh wait, there... There's the last enemy pod. They're on the ground, right on the other side of the building. I hope it's worth well, for now, we'll go ahead and move the rest of the squad to the bottom of the drainage pipe, and they'll climb up next turn. Go, go, go! Overwatch. Scanning. Overwatch. Scanning. Movement here. We can still hear that last pod moving around, so I'm going to go ahead and take a quick peek over the uh, edge of the building here. I'm on the move. And we still don't have visual, so forget it. Let's just get back to the evac zone and... We can all go home. Just in time. Let's do this. What's over there? I'm on it. There's that pot again. They're just standing down there. Well, lucky them, they get to live. Okay, two injured soldiers and two promotions to deal with. Mark will, of course, take field medic. And Don will pick up run and gun. And it looks like Badger has forged a bond with... Potato. That's a little surprising. But you know what? I think that works out just fine. Potato could use a friend anyway. Commander, having successfully recovered one of Dr. Valen's genetically modified test subjects, I am eager to begin conducting an autopsy as soon as possible. It is my hope that by following her own research notes, I will gain an even greater understanding of just how she managed to accomplish these rapid changes. 
Despite a few unpleasant surprises, Operation Ice Storm had been a success, and the men had come back with both a new recruit for our engineering team, as well as a two-ton cybernetic monstrosity for Tigan to hack apart. Although the mission had been successful, Don Slayer had taken advantage of our momentary distraction and had somehow managed to compromise our communication system. We quickly changed to new encryptions, but the damage had already been done. Several of the men were noticeably more nervous about being assigned to future operations. There wasn't much I could do about it, so instead I just turned my attention back to taking care of the busy work around the Avenger. Altex and Fireball had returned from their workshop meeting with the skirmishers, with a high-end sniper scope as their reward. It was a pleasant surprise, and it made me wonder what sort of material support the Reapers might have to offer. I decided it couldn't hurt to ask, and I assigned our most diplomatic soldier, Captain Phoenix, to handle the request. Of course, I couldn't just send him off by himself, so I asked Pierce Wall to tag along and watch his back. That's about the time I was called back down to Tigan's Psy Lab. Apparently their experiments had once again proven successful, and Naz Odeon was now exhibiting the ability to influence people's thoughts. Again, Naz and the researchers were ecstatic about this development, but I think a lot of the other men were starting to get a bit nervous about the direction things were moving in. I sifted through the various project proposals that the head of our psionics team had come up with, and I chose the one that seemed the least, uh, terrifying. I didn't read into the details, but I think it was intended to emulate the Advent Priest's ability to create a psychic shell as a last-ditch defensive effort against life-threatening trauma. Afterwards, I was called back up to the bridge to oversee another salvage report. This time, our salvage team had hit the mother load. They had managed to track down an old battle site left over from the early days of the war. It was a treasure trove of potential resources. And now that we had a decent amount of salvaged goods, it was time to reach back out to the black market. We had recently gotten word that they had begun putting out feelers again, so we quickly got in touch with them and handled some quick business selling off some of our excess supplies, and buying some useful equipment upgrades in return. After that, it was right back into the thick of things. Tygen had finished hacking apart that Archon I had given him. It had taken a bit longer than usual because of all the mechanical bits, but as usual it had inspired him to create some more unusual weaponry, this time some fusion-based melee weapons that Mox and the Rangers could make use of. And then his next project was obvious. I knew that no matter what I told him to do, he'd end up going behind my back to chop up that massive Berserker Queen, so I just leaned into it and told him to get started. He didn't waste any time. Then it was right back to the crisis room. Bradford had a folder of potential operations, all of them just begging for our attention. As usual, we could only choose one, so I looked through the options and then chose the one that involved messing up Mordena's pet project. If she wasn't going to pull her punches anymore, then neither was I. Mordena was trying to somehow upgrade the Advent Stun Lancers to make them more effective in combat, and one of our contacts, a sharpshooter named Denal246, had apparently found a way to disrupt this upgrade. There was a strong chance that Mordena was going to take this operation personally, so I put together a team of our best operatives, Mox and Dragonova took charge, and Altex tagged along as Dragonova's personal bodyguard. Lieutenant Salviti had performed admirably during the facility raid, so I assigned him as heavy support. And, of course, if there was going to be carnage, then we were going to need Karn as well. Phoenix wasn't available at the moment, so I rounded out the team with Sergeant Greenguard instead. This was likely to be a messy mission and Bradford apparently agreed because he dubbed it Operation Blood Valley. Hopefully, Advent would be the ones doing all the bleeding. A hacker working for the Resistance installed a data tap along the Advent network in this area, and the data they're retrieving is critical to the aliens' latest operation. Recon suggests the aliens are already moving to destroy the device. That data is too valuable to lose, so we're moving in to secure the area. Eliminate all hostile contacts and protect that gear. Hostile forces are already moving to destroy the data tap installed nearby. We need to lock down the area and secure the device at all costs. We got a last minute tip that Advent has additional materials stashed somewhere in the AO, but we don't have an exact position. 
The clock is ticking, but we should still try to recover that gear if possible. And welcome back. Once again, we're delving through a series of creepy seam tunnels in hopes of foiling Advent's latest plot. Moving out. We'll let Dragonova take the lead, of course, and... There's an Advent oh. captain oh. nearby. We should attempt to disable it with the Skulljack. Sorry, Tygen, I'm not sure that's really practical at the moment, but let's move the squad in a little closer and then we'll see what we can do. It's not a very difficult pod, an officer, a trooper, and a mech, but they are starting to see some pretty serious hit point bloating. That's probably one of my least favorite parts about XCOM 2. And unfortunately, because of their increased vigilance, I can't even move the squad into the same room with them without being spotted. So for now, we're going to have to hug the wall right outside. Position confirmed. Hmm. There's another access point through this wall over here. So I think we'll move some of the squad over there, too. Maybe we can flank these guys. That's about good enough, so let's get everyone on Overwatch. And then maybe we'll hit these guys next turn. I see everything. Okay, well, looks like we've got a lot of enemies clustered around the uh, objective. An officer, an advanced trooper, two sectoids, and an archon. Well, unfortunately, since we do need to get over there and protect the device, we can't really afford to move slowly. Let's go ahead and move Dragonova up and get a Claymore into place. I'd like to keep an eye out for that bonus Advent loot, too. I just don't know how practical that's going to be on a mission like this. Now, obviously, Dragonova won't be able to set off her own Claymore until we move Altex over and give her an extra action with teamwork. But first, let's go ahead and get some other guys into attack positions. Moving there. Closing on target position now. On the move. All right, Altex, go ahead and shout some words of encouragement, but try to do it quietly so Advent doesn't notice. The enemy fear us. And now let's go ahead and set off that Claymore. Nice, that took out the trooper. Oh, and the uh, officer's on fire, too. That's an unexpected bonus. Okay, let's go ahead and bring up the rest of the squad. Confirmed. Closing on target position now. And now let's go ahead and start picking off targets. Unfortunately, that Advent Officer has run him way off into the distance there, so we can't take any shots at him. But we shouldn't have any trouble dropping the mech, at least. There we go. Green Guard sets it up for the kill. And let's see if Karn can capitalize on that. Good enough. 
Target eliminated. The officer's way too far away for us to hit, so let's just set the rest of our guys on overwatch. I'm on it. Well, well, well. Look who it is. And I will end this quickly. Well, Mordena's arrival definitely complicates things a little, but it's nothing we're not used to at this point. And fortunately, those mind shields are still keeping our soldiers' crippling phobias at bay. The stress of battle is enough to get to anyone. When they get home, we'll have to give our soldiers plenty of time to rest. Chosen assassin is moving near your position. Stay on guard, people. Not even close. Where will you possibly run that I cannot find you? We'll just have to keep pushing up, but I do want to see if we can take out that officer this turn. He's pretty well entrenched over there, but with six soldiers, I'm hoping we can do enough damage to drop him. Oh, you know what? This might be a good opportunity for uh, for some justice. Only a 56% chance to hit, but let's go for it. Ha! I love that move so much. Alright, let's go ahead and finish that guy off. No loose ends. Their service is there is no shame in their defeat. They know nothing of their actions. Oh, that wacky Mordena. There was a time when I'd find that blatant disregard for life to be charming. Let's go ahead and bring up the rest of the squad. Unfortunately, the next enemy we're likely to run into is Mordena herself. And we already know that Overwatch is literally useless against her. But, just in case another pod wanders by... Hmm, that thing's really taking a beating. Hopefully it can hold out for another couple of turns. Okay, let's bring Dragonova up first, that way she can spot any enemies. Hello there. Will come and go, but the elder's vision cannot be so easily hindered. You've got the chosen in rage. Let's take it out. I was not expecting that. But let's take immediate advantage of it. Okay, let's keep pouring it on. Moving to position. Hmm, no hit that time, but do you lack the courage of your convictions? We've still got four soldiers, so let's see what else we can do. I will move. There will be no reconciliation for your kind betrayer. Fight and die with honor, or simply die. It makes no difference to me. Ugh, these hit chances are terrible. Without the Elder's guidance, you are nothing.
She's weak against explosives, so let's just do this the easy way. That took out the vast majority of her health, so hopefully Karn can finish her off with a pistol shot. Blood for the Blood God. And that'll do it. Wish I could say that was tactics, but we definitely got lucky just stumbling into her like that. Chosen can be hurt. Now we just have to work on putting them down for good. Copy that. Okay, we definitely need to engage those guys this turn to get their attention off of the tower. I already know how I want to approach this. So let's get Dragonova back into stealth, and we'll move her up front to get exact positions. I will go. I have sight beyond vision. I've spotted an alien The objective patrol. is in sight, Commander. Minus 1-5, we've got a line on the target. Move to protect that gear at all costs. Now let's start carefully moving our squad up. We want them in position for when we trigger these pods. But the big question here is going to be whether or not Salviti can lob a perfectly placed grenade through that opening over there to hit the enemies without hitting the tower. And that is literally perfect. Grenade sniping like this is a little silly, but that's XCOM. Now let's see how many of these guys we can pick off. Heading out. Unfortunately, Dragonova did get spotted, so we'll have to do something with her as well. Let's see if Green Guard can soften up that Archon a little more. Eh, no luck there. What else can we do? Let's go ahead and bring Karn up to this elevated position. He can take a shot with his pistol. He's definitely got some pretty solid chances to hit. But I think his priority target needs to be that sectoid across the way. Ah, and of course he missed. I really should have gone for one of the easier targets. Well, we're starting to run out of actions here, and we haven't taken anyone out so far, so...
Let's go ahead and have Dragonova finish off that sectoid. Return to your guards. I need ammo to hunt. And now I'd like to have all techs do a blade rush, but unfortunately I'm not sure if any of these approaches are viable from a defensive standpoint. Oh, wait. Actually, he can come around this Advent Officer, can't he? And, of course, it just wasn't quite enough to finish off the Officer. Well, we'll keep our fingers crossed and hope that that Officer is stupid enough to trigger Blade Storm. For now, we really need to focus on knocking at least one or two more enemies off the board. So, let's go ahead and have Mox take a shot at that Trooper. Nicely done. Okay, Blazing Pinions is nothing to worry about. The sectoid still shooting at the tower. Oh, and there goes the officer. He just killed himself. Hmm. And some bonus loot. Definitely some nice stuff in there. Okay, just two enemies to take care of, and uh, we need to make sure we move all of our guys out of the way of these missiles. I think we'll start off by taking out that sectoid. That's pretty much a sure bet. And now we can focus on taking down that Archon. By the numbers. We'll probably be able to shoot him down before the end of the turn, but just in case... We want to make sure we move our guys into defensive positions before we take our shots. I go where I am needed. Loading fresh ammo. Moving to position. Blood for the blood god. Nice shot. Now let's get Mox to a better position. Moving here. And there's another decent hit. Just one more, and we should be able to drop this guy. hit this guy with a mid-air grenade? I guess that would be too ridiculous, even for XCOM. But that's okay. Bullets got the job done just fine. You know that was good. Status confirmed. All hostiles are down and the area is secure. Status confirmed. Mission accomplished. I would like to assure the citizens of Advent that our peacekeepers will stop at nothing to prevent further attacks by criminal elements such as the one that occurred today. The elders have total faith in our ability to overcome any and all threats to our peace.
Once again, our operation had been a complete success. The new Advent training program was thoroughly disrupted, our ground contact, Captain Denal, had officially joined our ranks, and, most importantly of all, I had managed to thoroughly piss off my ex-girlfriend. All things considered, it had been a pretty good day. I had had my doubts about this whole war against Advent thing in the past, but as much as I hated to admit it, things were really starting to look up for a change. 